If it was just the two of us who had gotten into that accident, it wouldn't have been as complicated as it was because we got our families involved. Like he got his uncle. That's who, symbolism. Yeah, he was he was <laughs> talking about how his uncle's like a very impo- like it. We were talking about how our family was just raised in different generations, and you know their responses to things are entirely different. They can't just like have like the a peace of mind about getting into something like this. Whereas we got he and I got into it, we immediately connected. I personally, I feel I I felt like I like I sound like you miss him. I do, (laughs) but I also know that it's a once in a lifetime opportunity to meet my doppelganger. Yeah, (laughs) you're a European (laughs) doppelganger. Yeah, and so I. Midway through, like, probably a couple hours afterwards, because I was with them for better part of the day. They bought me food. They got me pizza. Oh, nice. And, yeah, it was it was very nice. Uh, I took them to their Airbnb. Uh, but, yeah, I I sat down uh, chain-smoking with him behind the Mr. Tire. And <laughs> I was like, you know, we could literally ask each other anything right now. And so he asked me, like... We could a, kiss right now, even. Yeah. <laughs> It wouldn't like, be gay. It's just you and me. <laughs> You're literally me. I'm, I'm trying to get to something serious here. <laughs> you touch your doppelganger, it creates a black hole. So <gasps> it's a good thing. You do. Yeah, you guys. But it's the oh, best kiss of your the life. Fuck out of that, man. <laughs> we hugged. We hugged. Oh, nice. Okay. We, okay. we, we oh, let an nice emotional thing. tear out over <laughs> nice. our shared plights. Uh, but yeah, I asked him, like, do you do you enjoy your life? Oh my god. Like, that's baby. that's a big question. But also, it's it's kind of the only time I feel like I can ask that question with like. And just be okay with it, you know? Yeah, yeah it's rock like, bottom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, because, I mean, like, we we got to, we got into the accident. It's like, our day is going really shitty. But it's like, yeah. besides all that, do you, are you having fun being alive? Do you enjoy mm-hmm. everything? What do you say? This was the best car accident ever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it kind of was. Uh, and the way he described it to me was that he... <sighs> Once again, the language barrier was there. Yeah. So it's kind of hard to know exactly what he meant. But for the most part, I think that... Oh, fuck, I'm actually drawing a blank on what he said. Wow, way to, way to me for being a bad person. <laughs> punchline. Yeah, yeah. Maybe he was just like saying incomprehensible <laughs> shit and because he was like in no, such an open he, head he space, was like, saying, oh my god, that's so profound. That's so <laughs> he, was, he was talking about... Okay, I gotta know. He was talking about how he feels held back by his family. He feels weighed down by their expectations and his burden in the like he feels burdened by them. And how just like he wishes so desperately to be an individual and to be able to assert himself into the world that he doesn't know if he's enjoyed his life so far. Yeah, that is pretty heavy. Yeah. It's kind of interesting Surreal. because you guys both having like the family related issues coming into this accident mm-hmm. accident and then you guys have the accident and you guys both end up needing to call your families. No, his like family was with him. I had to call my family. Well, yeah. you guys were you guys needed yeah. your family to still solve the situation mm-hmm. essentially. Yeah. But yeah, having the same kind of troubles and everything, it's it's pretty interesting. It, w- it was a it very kind of human up. interaction and like for a brief moment when I first initially hit my shoulder, I was pissed. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I was legitimately I was so fucking mad were you angry at him N- just like the whole scenario yeah, like just, to, just to like vent getting the like just, just yeah. cope with the pain just to yeah. just to cope with not even just the pain just the whole the audacity of the scenario that just yeah. occurred how dare uh, the universe do this to me <laughs> I, know, I just avoided one fucking accident and you you throw another one at me fuck you like it's fucked up uh, I was I was really sad about that. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah. That sounds pretty cool, though. It's kind of sick to, like, actually meet someone like that. It it was. It was a very unique experience. And also, like, like, that's some shit I've been dreaming about. Like, (laughs) meeting my doppelganger for you. I hated the circumstances that happened, but... You guys had to happen somehow. It. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I met my doppelganger in Columbus. And Did I'm, you? Well, I'm friends with him. So, okay. well, like, well, as, as close as I have his get, phone number. Like, it's not as much like, <laughs> like you. It's Matt? just we're very similar. Mm. It's not Matt. It's, oh, okay. it's my friend Sammy. Oh, uh, Matt, okay. Yeah. Tyler's right. Yeah. Matt's cool. Yeah. That's interesting, though. Like, I don't know. That's such a cool experience, especially because you. Do you ever like introspect about yourself? Like maybe when you're high or something, and it's you're like, like and you're like, I'm fucking weird, and then you meet someone else who's like you, and you're like, never mind, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, it, it would. I did have like a moment of suspended disbelief where it's like, this is like if if I had Vadim's genes right now, like 
Is that a brand or is that? It's a person. It's a <laughs> person. Oh, Vadim's jeans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I Come on down to Vadim's jeans. <laughs> Come on bitch. down to Vadim jeans. Uh, but yeah, no, yeah, no I'm kidding. Like if if I was <laughs> if I was born in like London, that would be me. Like I, there was like that small moment in my head where it's like this this could have been like my timeline. Is yeah. just sitting in the back of my head. It was you like, said he he looked Italian. Yeah, he did. You got he Italian, did Italian vibes. Italian. Yes, yes, yes. What are Italian vibes? I don't know. I mean, like, and he's sipping like darker coffee. hair. Yeah, yeah, darker hair, Caucasian. He had a, he had a, he was the opposite of me with the beard. <laughs> he, uh, I can only grow this. He can grow everything else, but it's still not a full beard. Is he like Amish? Uh, <laughs> no, it was like, it's like, uh, like scruffy. Yeah, scruffy. Yeah, okay. Like, yeah, I don't think, like, I could tell for sure for that if he tried, there. he could not. No, not really. Except for the mustache. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. A little Mario moment, you know? Yeah. Yeah, not to mention we were like almost the same height. <laughs> so what did you guys bond over like spiritually? <laughs> just your, the, issues. just the fucking shittiness of that day. Yeah, and yeah. like that's that was the that's initial connection. Thing to bond yeah. over. Well, yeah. Like, also like being at the same point in your life at the same time, I think is like a big one. Very much too, yeah. We we had, I I told him how I picked up my girlfriend from New York <laughs> fucking when I was 21 of oh, fucking and he was doing the same thing. Literally doing the same thing. It felt like I was looking at a younger, more European version of myself. <laughs> it was absolutely weird. Everything seeing. I want in life. Your dad's been around, huh? Yeah, it, it's, <laughs> it's so hard to talk about this kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to talk about this kind of thing because there's so much that we covered and it's so hard to talk about it right very now. Very intimate after. as it well. It was a very intimate moment yeah, too. Yeah, this happened yesterday. Yeah, probably. it happened yesterday. It was a very, very human interaction. And I, by the way, I never got to say this because you were talking, you, it, he was talking about his relationship with his family and it's just, you yourself are trying to become an individual. I hope that at some point you find your perfect answer. I hope that you will find an answer that you are 100% happy with and can take that step going forward. I think your family is wonderful, but also self-care, man. We talked about it. Do you, the one <laughs> Shout thing, out Alessandro. The one thing that you can be sure of is yourself. So, you know, make sure that you're happy with yourself. Oh, I mean, <laughs> that's what we talked about. Yeah, okay. we, we talked about how we wanted to be individuals and, you know. We're oh, like, well, I was saying, I was more so responding to the... Um, the only thing you can be sure in is yourself. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I I've, I've had a lot of experiences that have made me doubt my own perspective. But how are you ever going to be sure of him or him? Like you, the only thing at the end of the at the end of your life that you can ever be sure of is yourself. Mm. I get and what your whole life is working towards being that. Nice. Because at the end of the day, you only have yourself. Mm. I don't. <laughs> What do you no. mean? I don't. I have I don't, my um, Hatsune that. Miku body pillow, actually. So, well, I mean, yeah, we, we well, also, the thing is, it ties into a bunch of different things we talked about, too, where it's like with, you know, dealing with other people, you have to, you can't necessarily be sure of who they are. So, you have to work within that, work within the system. You can't mm -hmm. be truly yourself with other people. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to work within like these boundaries that everyone sets up. Have you taken and, Molly? Huh? <laughs> have you taken Molly? <laughs> yeah, that, that we, did I, he I take Molly? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. We didn't. We didn't talk about. Drug. All we did was smoke a joint together. That's it. Well, I'm just saying. Like, I feel like Molly definitely takes down those barriers because you're like, you're like communication feels so good. But yeah, <laughs> but you don't even care. You're just like, I want to touch yeah. everything. Yeah, I feel everything. Alessandro, I've, I've done it once. I recommend just trying it. You know, <laughs> just once. Did don't, you, don't get addicted. Did you plug the podcast? Yeah. I did. I did <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck is wrong with you? Because Which I wanted, podcast, I wanted though? it to end like poetically. You know, I That's wanted. Poetic. Yeah, that would be. Poetic. <laughs> I, I want. If he ever finds this podcast, I want it to be 100 percent on pure coincidence. You know what you say to him? What? Welcome to the No Thought Podcast. <laughs> so, my name is Alex. My I'm name is Zane. Anthony. And we have a guest with us this I, time. I'm I'm Tyler. He was with us last Tyler. time. Yeah, yeah. but so, <laughs> literally, I'm so mad. That's like the second time it's happened where I've just like, everything's fine. It's re It looks like it's recording. And then when I hit space at the end of it, it just deletes all the recordings. I'm like, okay, okay, cool. Great. It was a, Perfect. Yeah, it was a pretty good <laughs> podcast, too. It was a pretty good episode. We talked a lot about fucking... Um, Everything, emotional all, damage. Yeah. <laughs> emotional <laughs> damage, yeah. I don't want to rehash all the topics that we talked about. I want to talk about the movie again still, though. Oh, my God. <laughs>
a dumb movie. We need to get our reviews yeah, I out. I had my there. everything yeah. everywhere all at once moment. Yeah, so. honestly, literally. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but, um, the refractors. The movie was really interesting. I I think I really loved it. Yeah, coming out of it, I had like a couple gripes, but as I sat with it more, I was kind of just like, it doesn't really matter that those things were like that. He was all, all my gripes were really small with griping. that movie. It wasn't too bad. It was just like I I felt like the I felt a little bit of path. whiplash going back from like super serious moments to comedy and then battle sequences. But I think within the context of the movie, it's not anything. Uh, like too jarring because no. the whole movie itself is jarring. I actually talked about uh the movie uh on uh the radio station actually as well with really? uh, my with oh, my really? mentor Dustin because we had a Shout we had a Dustin. caller come in. We were talking about uh, a twenty four movies and we were talking about the difference between aesthetic and genre. Did you plug the podcast? <laughs> no. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with because you, Alex? It's not my fucking show. <laughs> Well, actually, on the podcast, <laughs> not recorded with my don't, buddies. Yeah, don't be that dude. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, uh, the one, the caller who called in uh, was you also, take calls. Yeah, I'm about to call in. Uh, the the person who the person who called in was a uh, was a member of the radio station as well. That was our first caller, and the second caller we just talked about the so setting like genre. A, a plant. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, a it, plant. It, it, but he, he's he's <laughs> that guy is constantly listening to the radio station because he's like a he's a deliver, he's a driver. Uh, oh, okay. He does like late night drives, and so he does nothing but listen to the radio station. driving nerd. And so he has a lot of shit to talk about because he just sitting there driving. And he was talking about this one movie called Saving the Green Planet, and it's in a similar vein of like a genre mash of things. Okay, and hearing the the synopsis of the movie. It's fucking ridiculous. Like the, I, it's an an emotional roller coaster of just like plot lines <laughs> happening in the synopsis itself. Yeah, and it's like some South, it's like some uh, South Korean movie uh, that he ended up seeing way, way, way back when. Interesting. I'll have yeah. to watch it. But yeah, now I I personally I don't really uh, feel any whiplash from the. Um, I'm feeling some whiplash. <laughs> yeah, that's a different story though. Um, I didn't feel any whiplash from the genre changes. I think it was really well done. I I um I can understand maybe what you're talking about, but like I don't know, like when the the rock scene was really big for me. I fucking when yeah, that came yeah. on, I was like. Bruh. I was like, this is perfect. This I thought it was dumb, also, but also... No way. Yeah, I, no, I, I thought it was the dumb. Rock. It fits. It 100% fits, but I still thought it was dumb. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just Sorry. love the space it gave, and I was, in a, yeah, exactly. I was in a good movie theater with like a bunch of... like an independent film center in Columbus. Yeah, and I, I was in a good theater, Oh, yeah, too. no, I 100% I I understand yeah. the point of the scene, I'll, but... I, I didn't need that break. I didn't need that, that mix-up from the movie mm -hmm. for me well, to... I, I don't enjoy it more. Well, I think it's just I don't like even think super it was interest. Like the movie's already. I think the rock scene so many, is all for pacing. What? Yeah, but I think it's also pushing so many bounds, and that's them going like, "Oh, we can," and that that's them going like, "We can take this a bit further and just yeah. make it a little bit more insane." And there's there's like no. I think it's impressive because there's no suspension of disbelief throughout the like the entire movie, just because it's done so well. And any time where it's like really weird, everything it, felt it's tangible. So, it's so funny that you're like, "Oh, this is just like it's very relatable." Yeah. And the Rakakuni. Yeah, Rakakuni. <laughs> also, I fucking love that. Like the um, uh, the conversation between the two fucking rocks. I don't know. It was just so it felt really real. You yeah. know, it felt really human. Just like, I think like rocks. a mother daughter conversation. Yeah, just, exactly. Was, I think that's actually a good point because like that scene was kind of a little bit of a climax in like their mm -hmm. relationship where it was yeah. like it, it was done in a comedic way, a relatively comedic way, but also it was very spiritually uh, charged, I guess, because it's like they're literally in like one of the millions of universes where life never even existed, mm -hmm. and they're still like these entities that have like these feelings and stuff. I'm mm -hmm. I'm sure that's probably not exactly what they're trying to portray, yeah. but it was like personification of this, uh, just these inanimate objects having the yeah, same it worked kind really of, well. Uh, well relationship, like a mother and daughter would have, mm -hmm. which is you know the the bodies of Joy and Evelyn. It what is. Oh, I was gonna say that just real quick that that it is and it is very interesting to me that like this emotional relationship climax is literally done over text yeah. like just yeah. <laughs> text on screen and it's just it's the most absurd that it fits it's 100 fit. it's, I, had, uh, I had zero problem i want to say that i had zero problems with that scene it's, I, an, I it's just a personally, subversion of yeah, like I, all the crazy shit that's going on and then mm. it's like a palate cleanser on top of one of the heaviest moments absolutely it was yeah. great spacing i i will say that it is a great port part in the movie i just didn't need it also it shows that like like the main conversation that happens throughout the whole film is one about like 
family and like mm-hmm. mother daughter relationships, like like a you know father mother relationship. like tradition versus like the because if you yeah. there's like three characters like Gong Gong, he's like super traditional, like you know like Alex brought up in the last podcast that got deleted, like the whole idea of the um you know following like the family uh structure or whatever like the, the whole I- yeah the whole idea holy of, um, shit like working I did hard and talk everything. with Alice about this <laughs> and um <laughs> and then like the mother is like torn between the two worlds because he she has the daughter who's like very much progressive americanized anti traditional uh you know behavior and she's like torn in between these two worlds like what does she choose? Like, how does she, um, yeah. How does she, how, how does she, does she strengthen manage, and keep that? How does she manage expectations of both her, her, yeah. her and her daughter's future? That, yeah, that's pretty much it. And how does she manage yeah. the expectations of, of herself and her daughter? Well, there, mm-hmm. yeah, there's like, there's like dual themes of like, like the interplay between like family relationships and then also mental health. And mm-hmm. they're both covered in that rock scene. And it shows that, that, like those themes and the way they go about exploring it holds up by itself without any of the crazy action and yeah. without any of the crazy, like, I mean, it still has that back, like that, that background of like, you're in a world where nothing exists and like these rocks are talking to each other and that's kind of crazy. But like, it shows that just the conversation they're having about it itself is good enough. It's to very fundamental. Its yeah. yeah. The great part about that movie is that you can split it, split a lot of it up and throw it up on like one minute TikTok clips and it still holds up. <laughs> Yeah, like, just like individual <laughs> themes you can gain from yeah. just a one interaction from somebody. I, when you can when you can take a movie apart scene by scene and it still all makes sense, and then you put it all together and it still all makes sense, that's a beautiful fucking thing. Mm-hmm. When yeah. the sum of its parts yeah. is or like the greater than the entire project. Mm-hmm. They cover a lot of topics. Way around. <laughs> it, they even like However fight it's like, meant to be said. Yeah. like the, there's the mother-daughter thing, like you said, the mental health thing, also like combating like nihilism as yeah. well. And yeah, um, I think that was a huge thing yeah. for me. And also, yeah, like um, using like optimism as a strategy and like uh, for like just making your life better and like other sorts of things. Like, yeah. I don't know. There, there was a lot of really cool themes and really well done, tied up plot lines, too. I don't think I would have handled the car crash as well if I didn't see that movie. <laughs> and I wasn't like, let's use the Wang method. Today. <laughs> the Wang. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. fucking beat his ass. <laughs> alpha I'm tapping Wang. into Alpha Wang. Yeah. yeah. That, <laughs> you just see me in the car getting myself paper cuts like oh, I'm going to yeah, fucking Jesus. get these guys. That scene <laughs> fucked with me. Alex had to spoiler. get into a car crash to tr- uh, to truly digest yeah. the movie. Like, con- he has to contact European Alex. <laughs> 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 That's how we got on the same wavelength. The, yeah. the car crash that lined up our, our brain waves. Your frequencies. <laughs> in that, like, in that case, you were literally having a conversation with yourself. It kind of felt like that. It really did. <laughs> no, like seriously. Uh-oh. Not not to get like kind of crazy. Schizo uh, moment. <laughs> it, it, goes dissolved sort of fun. <laughs> Schizo moment. But it, it's a weird thing where like I I I understood going into this that I would only see him probably once in my entire fucking life. And it's crazy how honest you can fucking be. Strangers? Yeah, no, yeah. just with strange strangers, no. I mean someone that you know that you only see like once. Like the co- the chances of you ever meeting again in the rest of your life are slim to none. And you're forced to interact. So yeah, it's you, like it's like the perfect setup yeah, for it. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah it's like you how you just, make friends as an adult, just getting into car crashes. <laughs> yeah. Or walk a dog. I don't know. That's a bit easier. My insurance is like out oh, through the fucking roof right now. But I have so many friends. Yeah. <laughs> I want a really rich friend. I'm gonna crash into a Cadillac today. <laughs> oh my god, a Tesla. <laughs> hey Michael. <laughs> Um, that's, that's something really strange. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I want to say my favorite scene wasn't the rock scene. I think it was, well, I guess it wasn't a single scene, but the universe where, um, Evelyn, is that? Yeah. yeah the main character. Yeah. Um, she's talking with, well, she's the martial arts expert and mm-hmm. she's at like her phone. Oh, talking to Wang. And she's talking to Wang. Yeah. Wang. Also at the, yeah. He's, yeah, he's Sigma definitely Wang. Sigma Wang. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then his own way. And he's just like, smoking a cigarette in the alley yeah like that was just like aesthetically that was such a good scene and it was just like it was so well done and also just like i don't know two people reconnecting Mm -hmm. after they haven't seen each other in a while like that's something i definitely relate to because i you know i do that with us well yeah (laughs) i I guess but like to even more extreme extent like i don't use social media so i don't keep up with anybody i used to know Mm -hmm. and so then i'll see them and i'll talk to them and it's like holy shit like this is 
how it's much weird. they've changed. Yeah, how much yeah. they're a different person. I, I love, like that a lot. Well, just now. the fact that you can also still talk to them and it's like yeah. not weird. I feel like I have I reverse know. moments like that where it's like I I don't keep up with social media. I meet some person I knew from way back when. It's like wow, you have not changed whatsoever. I feel like there's a lot of people in my life that haven't really changed Bruh. much. But also, there's a lot of people. <laughs> He did it. There's a lot of people that went through the Tyler just grabbed the jewel with his toe socks. By the way. <laughs> um, there's a lot of people in my life that I used to be really good friends with in high school that I talked to like uh, like we hang out a couple times a year. Maybe mm -hmm. um, we don't see each other very commonly, um, but like I can see their growth in front of me because of how consistently I'm seeing them, but also how widespread I'm seeing them. Mm -hmm. So like every several months, I'll go to talk to somebody and they'll be like a completely different person, but still the person that I can be friends with. Yeah. we can still connect on that way. But also there's a lot of people that I feel like have kind of just gone different ways and their personality has changed more so in a direction that I can't really, you know, be friends with anymore, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which really kind of sucks growing up because it really does signify that you're growing up yeah. because meeting people, uh, which was going to bring up earlier, like Alex met somebody in a car crash that was such a, like an interesting person to him. But you can meet somebody who's a friend of a friend a thousand times and never have that same connection. Yeah, it's never going to be as... Um What's the word? Like Genuine. impactful. Mm -hmm. mm. And when I was, it kind of ties in because like when I was younger, I like wanted to be friends with basically everyone that I met or everyone that I could mm -hmm. meet. And it led to a lot of different arguments and discrepancies later on, like between friends, like when I would introduce people to each other. Um, so it was just kind of like dealing with that was something really hard growing up because I was like, these people are my friends and I yeah. have, uh, I'm not like extremely close with my family, like on a person to person basis. So losing friends or like gaining friends is very important to me. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. a big deal. So, and I think that kind of fed into the nihilism, which I, uh, I guess saw in a greater picture from the movie, um, everything everywhere all at once. <laughs> I don't think we even said the title yet. Callback. I think we did. Yeah. We um, did. I, I so mentioned like that, it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, we did the mention. everything bagel nihilism, uh, yeah symbolism i think was really important to me yeah. it, it, it's like all these things in my life especially with like dealing with friendships and just growing up dealing with a whole bunch of um i guess expectations of like finishing college getting a job and everything it really weighed down so i was kind of like you know it it felt like life didn't really have much yeah. meaning because yeah. i wasn't really succeeding at anything and me personally i have like an affinity for succeeding it's kind of unhealthy well, no, I, I think a lot probably of probably anybody. Do. Yeah, I, but like, I think it's I like that I think sentence. It's you have an affinity for succeeding. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because it's like a lot <laughs> of people propensity don't, to succeed. A lot of people don't care, but I feel like I hold myself to a standard that is unhealthy, which is why I feel like I have kind of an over reliance on succeeding. I don't think a lot of people don't care. Like you may think that they don't care because of like what you see on the outside. You know, they might hide it well, or they just don't talk about it. But like, I feel like most people take failure pretty hard. Yeah. Um. Like the like. You know, there's a difference between like moving on from it or like being able to digest it. But I think generally people like they take it pretty. Well, I think there's a lot of people that still kind of just clocked out in general. Yeah, I think um, I don't know, like, like that me. that nihilism mindset where it's kind of just like it doesn't really matter what happens. Me, me yeah. personally, I'm a, like uh, in an internal battle where I'm like to live a simple life or to like push myself and like, mm -hmm. you know, see what I be can the do. best you can be. Or yeah, I feel like a lot of people have that. Like it reminds me of that Anthony Bourdain quote where he's talking about like. There's a like every day I'm in a fight with a guy who just wants to sit on the couch and smoke weed. Yeah. And like that's it's that's real. real. <laughs> and like, yeah, like kind of dealing with that where he's like, yeah, I just want to like kind of chill and live a simple life and just say fuck it. But also I want to I want to see shit. I want to do yeah. shit and I want to see where life takes me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like the in the essence of self-care, I feel like. The minimum we should ever ask for is to live a stable, healthy, like s simple life. I feel like it's our ambition that will drive us beyond that point. But for the most part, we should always seek to live a comfortable, stable lifestyle. And I feel like we should always seek to have a simple life that we can go back to. Why should we all strive for that? Because if you don't have anything to fall back on then what what do you well, what basically else like, do you have? like saying like you're a plan like putting a, a plan b essentially. putting all your eggs in the same basket of like i my ambition will take me where i wish to go that's a bunch of unneeded stress it's just yeah. my ambition will i think of it more as my ambition will drive me further rather than my ambition is the only way for me to be yeah yeah so instead of it's like the shoot for the stars 
or like shoot for the moon and if you miss you'll land amongst the stars or something yeah. like that something that's I think it something was, like the shoot quote. for the stars and if you you land, land on the moon on the moon yeah whatever no i'm, yeah, I'm no sure. i think i'm pretty I sure it's shoot for the way. moon yeah, you land amongst the, the stars i'm pretty that, sure which is fucked that doesn't make sense you'll go further look bro i think they don't know anything about the i think the meaning of that saying is that you have your goal your goal is the moon and even if you fuck up that goal you're still in fucking space that's still impressive and that mindset cloud if you miss your life in the kuiper belt <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you miss. You'll enter a debris field and die. In Twenty minutes. <laughs> the ionization from the sun will immediately rid you of all your cells. Yeah, no regret. You won't then. have to worry about much then. I think that mindset is like what I struggled with understanding because I was basically like, I, you know, I want, I'm not doing anything too crazy with my life. But even mm -hmm. with the stuff that I was doing, I was like, I need to get this done or else like I am a failure. Yeah. And, if, and you're, you're right. Like there's a lot of people with that mindset, but there's, I think there's a lot of people who it have on, or they, they're on the same path as me essentially, where it's so easy to slip into that nihilistic mindset because, you know, after not succeeding for a given amount of time, it's like, well, what is going to change? I don't think anything can change. Oh, I get what you're saying. Well, have, have you guys ever met anybody who's like truly happy and they're like living a fairly simple, I mean, what, like what is I, truly happy? Means? Well, like, I they're they're fulfilled. I, w I don't want to say happy. I would like to say that I'm I feel like I'm relatively fulfilled. Like I, I don't have any life has kicked my ass uh, <laughs> several times over. But uh, when I was talking to Alex about how like if we've enjoyed life so far, it's just like I really enjoy the moments where I'm happy and just Though I enjoy those moments so much that it's okay playing the long game to sometimes be happy. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah, I think I think that's definitely like a uh, a realization of someone who um, is content with their life in some respect because it's like they can understand that there's going to be some suffering necessary in order to <clears throat> achieve some goal. Yeah. You know, whatever whatever that goal may be. Like I don't believe in. A hedonism or hedonism where it's like life is the accumulated pleasure it's 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 something like deeper than that it's more like a, a you my day-to-day -day life i am comfortable within my own skin yeah. i am happy with the person who i have become mm -hmm. and i feel like the the consequences that come about that aren't necessarily impactful so much to me as it is to the way I interact with the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I kind of like, I definitely had to think about that a bit when like we got back from Arizona last night mm -hmm. and I'm then going to my parents' house, which I already don't like doing just because like I like living on my own. Yeah. And I was like, just like, I was, I was like pretty sad because I was like, this just kind of like, I'm just by myself now. Like I was just on a vacation with like three friends I've had for most of my life. It felt empty. Yeah. Kind of. And I was like, well, like, yeah, that's okay. Like sometimes you just like, you feel that way. And it's just part of being a person like you. Um, I was reading something about it's like loneliness versus being alone. Well, yeah, kind of like solitude versus loneliness where like solitude is oh, like, yeah, you, it's like a choice. You, you appreciating the alone time you have and loneliness being where like, you just like are craving human interaction. Yeah. And there's like, yeah. And one is unhealthy, and then the other one is like you, like, yeah, sometimes you just need some time. Yeah, it is a, a healthy yeah. engagement. Yeah, I, I was kind of, we talked about this a little bit last time, but, um, you know, because I spent a lot of time isolated from people. I, just, I was just alone a lot. Yeah. So, like, about COVID in, no, not, just well, in general. Co COVID before that, kind too. of. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I was talking about more so much. like the same way. Yeah, it's like I'm game, talking about gamer like, lifestyle. Well, that, <laughs> but also because of my childhood, like the way that I was, like, you know, a very big diff age difference from my brothers and then my mom's like never at home or anything at all because of work or whatever. So I'm just always at home pretty much alone. Um, and so I grew to appreciate it. But I realized like um, maybe like a few years ago, I think once COVID started and I was like really forced to be alone now um, in my adult age, like I felt like truly lonely, like where I, I needed to talk to people. And anytime mm -hmm. I did talk to people, I felt like euphoric. Mm -hmm. I felt like really good. Um, edging yourself with friends yeah, pretty much yeah <laughs> I'm edging my friendship <laughs> <laughs> but it, but also that that like behavior it got like really toxic with like the 
kinds of people that I was hanging out with. Yeah, we're like just Tinder trying to hang out with people all the time, and then you just start like. Yeah, well, I was trying to that. find like mostly people on Tinder. Yeah, I, fe- I feel like hitting up my friends all the time. It feels weird. Yeah, I don't know. I was in the same headspace. So <laughs> yeah. We could have hung out like all the time. Yeah, yeah. we we could have had a much better time. <laughs> yeah, we could have spread so much COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Not funny. Fucked up. <laughs> Jesus I'm a Christ super man. spreader. We're only right. super spreading amongst our friends. Among us. Among us. Among us. I, yeah, I definitely have the same mindset. And I feel like it comes with depression almost because it's like you feel alone. It goes very hand Even hand. having friends. Because I, like, I could it talk. It exacerbates depression. I think, sure. uh, well, I think that is a causation of depression. Well, like that. Um, well, okay. Let me specify. I, because there might like be an the, interplay. The, the, the place that you are in is not caused by depression, obviously. But like the headspace that you get while being in that like isolated space is caused by depression. Well, it's also self-perpetuating. Like part of depression yeah. is like you, like the one of the hardest parts about depression is like the fact that being depressed keeps you depressed. Yeah, yeah. Like, like pushing a, yourself to actually seek yeah. help or anything. You literally or push you to go to therapy even. Mm-hmm. You push your friends away and then you feel lonely even more so. Yeah, and then you continue to push them away yeah. because it's now, now you feel like a piece of shit for and, pushing your friends away. And now you feel like <laughs> you like don't know them a little bit yeah. or you feel guilty about pushing Yeah, Or you like, feel like you should just die now because you just destroyed all your friendships. Yeah. You know? yeah. I feel like meeting that stranger yesterday really helped cemented the idea that like I'm like I'm happy because I got to have a genuine stranger interaction where it kind of validated my belief that at least I'm doing something right here. You know, the fact that we weren't yeah. up in arms trying to kill each other over an accident and, yeah. you know, the, the genuine human care that goes into like making sure people are right in an accident. That should be first and foremost for a lot of people based like, in humanity restored <laughs> a, a little bit i wholesome I, 100 i i've struggled for the longest time to have any semblance of faith in humanity and no, even, I get that. even now it's still like in the back of my mind i think like if that was some other person that could have gone horribly wrong i'm so fucking fortunate to have gotten into both of my accidents with just the nicest people yeah like they uh, obviously, you know, they, they still... The accident still sucks. It still sucks, yeah. We still got into an accident, I, but I'm so glad that everyone was okay and at least not a dick about it. I feel like that's that would be the case the majority of the time, honestly. Because yeah. I feel like on the internet... Because I, I spend it, a lot of time the on the internet. gets exaggerated all of, a lot. Yeah, all of... You're never going to see, like, oh, this interaction went good and they spent their whole day together, blah, blah, blah. Like, no one's going to fucking click on that. They're going to click on the video where there's a guy road raging at someone about to, like, drive up and shoot his Glock into the window. Yeah, like, that's what everyone's going to watch, yeah. Yeah. you know? So it's like, I think we have, like, a focus on conflict, like, in our mind on the internet. Hmm. But I don't know if that conflict necessarily exists to the same level that we think it does in real life. Yeah, you know? well, also, I, I think part of it is the fact that if you think about early humans, what drove them to do stuff was conflict. It's like, True. I'm hunting this yeah. animal because I need to eat. I'm, like, I'm fighting these people because they're going to fight me. Yeah. And, like, there's always... We're searching for conflict. Well, yeah, because conflict is an easy way to, like, align yourself with some... Yeah, true. Like, justify like, certain actions. goals. Mm-hmm. Yeah, where it's like, oh, I need to do this and there's no choice. And that's, like, a very easy thing to follow. Yeah. And it's harder to be like, oh, I'm, I'm searching out fulfillment in life. And that's, like, very vague and it's hard to define mm-hmm. and it's hard to find for yourself. So people are just like, I'd rather create some conflict and then resolve that because that's fulfilling enough. Yeah. People who start drama. <laughs> yeah. It's it's like a it's a tactic for survival, but when it comes to the uniqueness of the human experience, applying it to all the more personal applications is just like it's really unhealthy to want so much out of yourself when you yourself can't even give, you know, all of that. Because then you basically set yourself up for failure mentally. Yeah. Uh, when I was bonding with Alex, we were both talking about how we we both used to deal with like extreme anger issues in our lives growing up. And it's just, it's so, it's so refreshing to see that the angriest people in life, like if... When reformation you, is you, possible no like when you've hit like true rock bottom for your for your mental state and like you resort to anger for everything when you really see like the other side of the coin where like life is all about hatred spite and just when when you see what it what it does what it does to you and like you can and you like come out of that 
it's the most like refreshing thing. It feels like your your headspace is fucking clear. I mean, I, I would argue to say that I was a bit more driven when I was angry all the time, uh, because that's just how I learned how to live, you know? So you just be angry and use that hate to fuel you to keep going forward. But it's a really toxic cycle. It won't get you anywhere meaningful in any amount of time that isn't absolutely detrimental to and you. And I think it poisons interactions. It too, does. With it does. like, because you're always, you're like priming yourself to fucking hate whoever you're going to talk to mm -hmm. or like to, um, to think that they're trying to get something out of you or subvert some way. You know what I mean? Like, I, I definitely can see that. I've, I've had moments like that. I wouldn't say like, I've like been like that for a prolonged period of time, but I can kind of see what you're saying. Yeah. Um, and I definitely have noticed a change in you, like in terms of like your mindset and the, the I, types of things you would say. I, yeah, I you guys have known each other a very for a long time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like in high school, that was probably one of the, like that's when I was just start, at the starting level of like, I don't want to be mad all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I would, I was, it's still struggling because you know, you, it's hard to change out of that mindset. Yeah, for sure. You, you knew an entire way of life and now it's like, I don't like that anymore. And you just have to rediscover who the fuck you are. Anger it's is hard. really hard to get out of because it's like, it honestly kind of works in every situation where like you can just blame other things and be angry at stuff and then it like totally justifies whatever you're doing. Mm -hmm. It's also yeah. cathartic to like let out all the rage. Yeah, and like, it is. You know, you know, yell and or break something or something. Yeah. Like, There's just a healthy way to go about letting out that tension, that anger. You can yeah. still you can still be angry for the right reasons. Yeah. That doesn't mean explode on yeah. someone or something like that. Yeah. Well, I guess it depends on the situation, you know. That, that reminds me of when we had that land party like what two years ago. And oh, yeah. and then we were yelling at each other over CSGO. <laughs> I remember when that was Zane spilled uh, <laughs> a fucking Oh, is it like a like a T on my on my yeah. mouse pad? I was oh, so my upset God. about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that until you brought it up yeah. again. All I, did, I blocked all, it out. Don't worry. All I did was turn my mouse pad around, and it was all good. <laughs> I know because you were like my mouse pad, and I was like, no, because <laughs> you were just talking about it earlier. You're like, I love this mouse pad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, now I do remember that actually. Yeah, yeah. I remember like, I'm the so exact happy this mouse pad. It, it was like, so huge. <laughs> it was a massive mouse pad. It was the first time I ever had a huge mouse yeah. pad. I could use all this space. I'm like, whoa! My arm <laughs> yeah. can go all over. This have thing. you seen the artisan um, Japanese mouse pads? No, I haven't. Oh, there's the most the boobs. No, the <laughs> seen them. No, yes, I have them. <laughs> like they're handmade, but they're like they're really good. Have, like, no, I haven't I'll, seen them. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to show you them later. Send me a link or something. Yeah, to it, yeah. well, I think they're fair, like maybe like fifty to sixty bucks. Damn, they're, they're, they're really job. nice. Yeah, the prime, uh, <laughs> the prime mouse pads. Dude, I feel like my mouse pad is so dirty. I've had it for I can't clean like mine four years. I, I wash mine and it's still like just got and whenever I wash oh, yeah, it, I there's know. just like the, there's like gray water coming. You put out. it in the machine. Why well, well, hand wash it? Oh, yeah, okay. One thing that I saw is that uh, next when you wash like towels or sheets and stuff, put your mouse pad in with that and like have it line up against the uh, the back wall mm. so that way it's all covered up and like protected by that. Yeah, and then run with cold. Uh, but I heard about I heard about that being uh, a method of cleaning. I haven't tried it out yet because well, I haven't had the need to. I just swapped to a new mouse pad that's even larger than the last. <laughs> time, so yeah. you ever scratch your mouse pad? <laughs> Sometimes, <laughs> yeah. Accident. Sometimes my pinky used to drag on it, and it would like create like lines on it. Yeah, yeah. from your fucking you ever, sweat. You ever <laughs> scratch your W A S and D keyboard? Or no, keys? mine's not what? crusty. I freak. Mine, <laughs> I, I started the, cleaning mine once I got. I, once I spent like two hundred dollars on a nice keyboard. Oh yeah, like, you're like, yeah, this is my child. <laughs> yeah, uh, I fucking, I still have to, I have to clean my keyboard soon. Clean your keyboards right now, everybody. Everybody, fucking do my it. My keyboard's You'll, definitely gross. You should just do it, and also make sure you do maintenance on your computer. Get all that dust out of there Dude, every once in a while. Dust is bullshit. What dust is fuck? fucked up. Who came up with dust? Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Who first, invented dust? First of all, if you don't want your PC to get dusty, get a good case that actually has a filter on the intake. Second, mm. clean your room, bro. Ooh, like, get, like, Jordan Peterson. If, well, no, <laughs> That's kind of facts, room, though. Or, like, if you get like it an is. air filter in your room, then you, you'll be amazed at how little I dust fucking need there. one. Actually, yeah. I was my thinking room, about getting an air filter. I always wondered why, like everywhere I live, is just always so dusty, and I dust pretty frequently. But yeah. it's like there's nothing to pick it up, so it just kind of moves around until I blow a fan and put it out the window. But that only gets so much. So like yeah, an air filter. What base right now? Oh yeah, it's literally been there for like three days, and it, it I I I literally dusted it before I left. You got Jesus. so many skin cells, bro. Skin cells. <laughs> I'm a skin cell. <laughs> yeah, no, my my room my my rooms are. 
both fucking dusty. I should get an air filter. Air, yeah. air filters are the move. I've been thinking about one. I didn't know if it removed dust or not. I looked it up and I... Well, they, it was I mean, they should. I mean, like, yeah. some, you know, they're not going to remove the small stuff, but yeah. it will get a lot of it. And just, like, sweeping regularly, like, I've... Any amount of work I definitely helps. need to vacuum. Yeah, like, I, I sweep, like, usually twice a week, and... Yeah, like I that, vacuum. That my, definitely helps with like getting keeping stuff out of my PC. I really the self help podcast. My, yeah, as yeah, it should about be. How to keep a clean PC. <laughs> <laughs> I, We're not, talking about vacuuming right I'm, now. I'm not even joking though. Like I have like I remember I talked about this with you, Zane. But when I was like end of high school, like early college, like I was talking oh. about how like I just wanted to be uploaded online. Like <laughs> we, we literally talked I about this. I think with the Naya a couple episodes yeah, but, ago. Yeah, but I was like, yeah, I just kind of want to live in a computer, and I have like such. I had an attachment to my computer and like, and this, like if my PC was having problems, I would be having mental issues. (laughs) Like it's just a lot of stress. It's something that you're maintaining and it's like something that you use every day. Yeah. And it's like, I mean, I use that for like, you know, my, my hobbies and my schoolwork and stuff for my job. So it's just like, if something happens to it, you're fucked. Yeah. But it's like definitely like, yeah, going through my PC, like getting rid of old shit and like organizing all my files. It's definitely like a, so nice and like it feels it's, it's good. Less of a mental burden. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's, it's the car guy mindset. It's um, what's it called? Like when you're depressed, uh, this is like a this is like the big Jordan Peterson meme is like, and it's not even like a meme. It's like reality is like cleaning your room, like that small step of or, or making your bed. I think is like the first step that he says. I don't and like, like making my bed in the first place. I, yeah, but but he's talking about like the. The idea cleaning. of being um, in a depressed state and trying to end that cycle, yeah. like cleaning your room, it like it, it's a it's a goal like that you succeed in. It's a um, you know something that you don't usually do, so it like you feel good about that. It reduces like the um, what's it called like the I, I don't know like when you look at a room that's like a fucking mess, it kind of feels shitty to be in it. You, you feel like like. What the fuck? Like, why is yeah, it so, so messy? Who's gonna clean this? I get, I get what you mean. Cause also, there's no room to grow. Like, yeah. if you're like, if you have empty space, you can you. There's literally room to grow. Yeah, true. Like that, whoa. Yeah. whoa. When you're when you're That's living big. on like a monotonous day to day lifestyle and you're depressed, it's 100. percent It's so fucking hard to. Because you feel like you're in, you're depressed because of like that monotony of like nothing's changing in in your life, and yet still everything seems bad and trying to I, I i agree that those those simple steps are like they help change your mindset yeah. and i think that's that's the 100 percent the important thing to keep in mind when you're doing when you're like really sad is just that your mindset is what is perpetuating how you feel and if there's a better way to look at something do a little bit of introspect look inside and when, if, if you know what's holding you back why is it holding you back how can you fix it and then uh, there's some people who get burdened. <laughs> there are people who get burdened by that thought line too, where it's like, well, I've thought of fucking everything and nothing's working. And it's yeah. like, fuck, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's, it's really toxic. Well, you, oh, sorry, like when, when I'm depressed, I'm like just really, ap- like I've um, like anhedonia. Like I know that there's like for symptoms of depression, there's kind of like two categories where like mm. you're really sad. And then there's like where you're just like apathetic. Well, like apathetic and unfeeling and you have anhedonia. And like, I definitely have that where like, I kind of stop thinking. I don't really feel anything. Yeah. I don't even feel sad. And I'm nothing's fulfilling. Yeah. But it's like, also like, I don't think about stuff. Like when I like height of COVID, when I just moved out, I was, there was like a period of like three months where I literally didn't think. And then there's like the first night, like I smoked some. And then I was just thinking about like, oh, like I haven't actually thought critically about any part of my life for the past three months. And I was like, holy fuck, dude. Like yes. that, yeah. It's just ridiculous. You're like put on autopilot. Yeah, yeah, for that long. much. And I almost think it's like a way of coping with like yeah. too much going on. That's pr- probably definitely. Yeah. I feel like I've made the most of apathy. I like uh, I save it. I save <laughs> it for a, moments when <laughs> yeah. I, I save it for moments when it's like I need to perform 100 percent optimally right now. Efficiency. Yeah. Just where it's like max. me when I'm fucking. I'm just <laughs> no. it, it, like I, 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 mean, I don't give a shit about you. Yeah, Pure don't. apathy. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean I'll use it for really mundane tasks as well. Like I'll be playing Valorant, and I understand that 100 percent the best mindset right now is to not think too deep, not feel anything about it because I'm just the, acting. I'm acting within don't this get space ass right mad. Now. Yeah, don't get <laughs> ass mad. Yeah, when dude. someone BMs, just turn off. Yeah. BM back. I mean, I don't do that. Yeah, I kind of, I, 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 I just focus up. I, I mean, make people mad. 
I that's that's kind of the stage that I'm at. It's like I at first I was like actually angry that people were BMing like in Rocket League or whatever. And then I was just kind of like, I'm just not even gonna respond. But now I've gone to the point where like I like BMing people because it's funny. Yeah, I just like to troll. I don't say anything I don't say anything that's like oh like overstepping a line. I'm I'm not like kill yourself. (laughs) I'm I'm just kind of like when they say something back, I'll like repeat what they say back to me and or I'll be like skill issues. (laughs) The duality of man is both BMing back and (laughs) top fragging. (laughs) Top fragging to shut them up. There are two wolves inside of you. Yeah, Tyler, did you? Uh, so we just we just got back from our Arizona trip, um, and we climbed a mountain at the end, mm-hmm. which oh, was like a a big kind of experience because our our last road trip uh, up to Maine, we tried to climb a mountain that was way smaller, and we had a horrible time doing it. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't like it wasn't even actually climbing. Like there, we were free there, there it. It was hard to find the actual trail because well, it's in Maine and it was early spring, so it was they, well, densely it was washed away. away. Like, technically, the trails are closed, right? Like, yeah. and, and also like wow. it, it was raining quite a bit. Like it yeah. started raining once we actually found the trail and then we gave up because we're like, this is not worth it. Yeah. And it took us a while to find it. It was definitely like, it, it, it was, was kind the, of our fault, yeah. but also like, it just, it probably wasn't good t- time. Unfortunate time. time. It was, it was yeah. a bad time. And we were just like, we didn't know where the path was. Yeah. We were just free balling <laughs> up the mountain. Mm-hmm. But um, like, did you feel anything at the top of the mountain? Cause we were really fucking high up. We were in Flagstaff and which is already like a 7,000 foot elevation hike from sea, fl- uh, sea level and then the mountain was like 3,000 feet up yeah yeah Which, what'd you feel at the top I mean yeah. so I, I enjoyed it it's just nice like I ears pop um yeah, <laughs> oh like, yeah they, oh, like they a little popped bit multiple times yeah but um no way <laughs> getting to the hard. top was definitely like fulfilling I know like you guys are pretty guests at the end like the last little bit I literally just like took off my shirt and then yeah. just started like ru- pretty much running up this giant rocky like up like very zigzag trail and that felt really nice I one, one of the reasons I said it. I want to like we also went to the Grand Canyon and we did a short hike. I want to do that more just because I think it's more intense. Like I, part of the reason I like going outside and hiking is to like basically put yourself in a tough situation and kind yeah. of like remove yourself from like any possibility of escape and just like it kind of being isolated. Put your body to the test. Yeah. yeah. And it like, I, I definitely enjoyed it. that. But when you're at the top of the mountain, the hike down is easier and it's, it's it's less of a struggle going up yeah. the mountain we stopped like i don't know tens of times probably <laughs> yeah. because well when we when we went to, went down the grand canyon it was hot as fuck i was wearing my drug rug and it was just like overall like a really hot and unbearable experience but going the up the summer. mountain yeah. big mistake mm-hmm. <laughs> going up the mountain it was it was like in the beginning i felt the same kind of fatigue that i had yesterday and looking at the lookout tower at the top of the mountain i was like dude it's so far away this is so ass i hate this so much i already want to go back but it's at some point like when we actually saw that we were in elevation like a couple hundred 500 feet up you could see like how the mountains started to get Mm -hmm. smaller the ground started to become way further away and you're just like wow you know getting to that height is like the next step and then every time we stopped in shade or whatever we would stop and like just sit on the ground we'd look off into like the um, I guess like the whole plains, all the mountains. Did and you stuff. guys only hike in Flagstaff or did you hike in Phoenix? And we hiked in uh, Sedona, we, Phoenix. We did sm- like smaller hikes. Yeah. This is the one in Kendrick's Peak was the big one we did. That was like four and a half miles up, four and a half miles down. Like okay. it, to- it probably took us like seven hours and that was like including breaks and stopping yeah. at the top. Um, I don't, but like to actually answer your question, I know I kind of, whenever I'm outside and I'm like either running or hiking, I... I really just like don't think about what's coming up or what was behind me. I just think like I I really just stay in the moment. So like, I, how like, do you get through it? That's well, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, it's just I think it's more enjoyable that way because it's like I'm not gonna think about how much like I enjoy knowing how far along I am, but I don't think about like oh I have to go another few miles, and like I just kind of stay in the moment. And then when we're at the top, I just kind of like take it all in. I'm like, this is beautiful. Like I don't really think too much about like oh we it took us. Yeah, three hours to get here. I just kind of think think this is awesome. That's like the I have that mindset whenever I'm running. Like if I'm on a treadmill or something, I'm I'm like I just like close my eyes, don't even think about the time, and I'm just like in my own world, just running. Yeah, and it's like I think that's kind of a similar idea. Mm -hmm. Um, just kind of like mindset, just ignoring because it's like you're gonna get to your goal eventually. You just need to keep pushing. Yeah, and uh, like thinking about it makes it feel longer it was you know? horrible like <laughs> I, I was in the exact opposite mindset of just being like this sucks i hate this one moment that i'm in it's so far away you gotta go yeah. primal i feel like i was like a bit more prepped than you guys were just because i've been running Bless a lot you. um i don't know i 
definitely most of the time I was just focusing on my form and also trying to like my right inner thigh is way less yoked than my left <laughs> one. So I'm like, I was trying to use it more the whole time. Like, literally, like, that's what I was focusing on because I'm like, I, like, I'm like, I'm trying to even this shit out. Nice. And when I started listening to music, it was much better because I was able to think, I was just listening to the songs, just ignoring the fatigue. Yeah. It is, it, I think it is harder to do if you're like listening to yourself breathe and you're yeah, like, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. in the beginning, well, like the beginning of the path was actually pretty gradual. It was just a dirt path. And then when we got up the mountain more and like all the switch started coming up it was rocky as fuck it was basically just mm. all yeah. rocks was it hot it eh, was pretty there, it was like really. 70 and there was like a really nice cool breeze most of the time oh, okay. i would have and fucking it, loved and it and, it, and like, it was kind of cold at the top yeah nice. and, like, and it's mostly like i would say what like 60 percent of it was shaded like maybe, maybe mm, that, probably or, less well, but there the was a lot of shade probably like 30%. a lot of it was shaded mm. and like there's a lot there's a good amount of like shady spots throughout so you're never like just baking in the sun the whole time yeah that's huge i was standing outside yesterday for <laughs> like six hours under the sun like right in front of the 7-eleven it was like 80 <laughs> yesterday wasn't it yeah Damn. i'm pretty sure i got a little bit darker from yesterday i didn't get any tan from fucking arizona white <laughs> boy <laughs> yeah literally um that that experience was really nice for me because after how much i struggled going up the mountain because i was definitely the one that was struggling the most um especially in the grand canyon but up the mountain i was much better uh, yeah, you definitely, I think you wore pants, which is a mistake. Like, I think if you, if you had <laughs> on the Grand Canyon or the mountain, I, I think both, I think if you, if you had like more breathable pants and then you weren't wearing a literal drug rug, <laughs> and, like, like, cause you were drinking a lot of water yeah. and like, I, like I drink a lot of water and I sweat a lot and, and you were going like drinking like way more water than I was. And I'm, that's definitely because you were, your clothes were just you're too heavy. You're sweating you know, like, more. If you had lighter clothes, I think it, you would be surprised at how much easier it gets. I would say for the Canyon, that would be the case, but I feel like the pants didn't weigh me down that much. I drank a lot of water, but I ended up like just pissing the whole way down because yeah. I didn't need it. Mm -hmm. Zane, you, you were doing that hike on fucking hard mode. You were playing the dark <laughs> souls of yeah. hiking. Yeah. I mean, well, the heat it protected me from, but the weight of it also made me sweat way more yeah, which made me use more water so mm -hmm. it was like a it was like a class build that was yeah. a tank <laughs> and then all, yeah like also like spacing out water because like you it does make you like heavier if you drink a lot of water yeah like it, it's definitely like just a I, I think if you like if you did that again and you like wore different clothes and you knew like how much water to drink like at what points then it would be like 20 or 30 percent easier for the mountain yeah like, I mean, I, I, I thought it was pretty easy past the grass or past the dirt path point, Yeah, which was weird because of how rocky it was later on. Mm -hmm. It was, I don't know. It was like a, it, I think it was a mindset thing because I didn't feel any sort of like, I felt fatigue going up, but as soon as I started drinking water, it felt way better, but I didn't even need all the water that I drank. Like in the end, I think we all drank about the same amount because you and Sean finished your water pack. watchers. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I finished my pack in my backpack. We had like water sacks that were <laughs> drinking through a tube, like a still suit from yeah. Dune. Um, oh, hell yeah. And I finished it probably like 60% 60, 60 up the mountain. And then way I too didn't, quick. Yeah, but I didn't need the yeah. rest of it. Yeah. Like on the way up, I didn't drink anything. On the way down, I think I had a couple slurps, but it was mostly like just for you water. You finished your whole chug jug? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we listened to chug jug <laughs> in oh, the car. Yeah. Chug jug with you, yeah. Thank God. Um, but yeah, going like having that fatigue and going up the mountain and like seeing the peak, it was like I I remember like sitting. You guys went up. You mentioned this earlier, like how how you left and I was taking like a last break up like maybe 20, 30 feet from the actual mountain peak that you couldn't mm -hmm. see because it was in one of the switchbacks. Um, just sitting there like alone. It was kind of like, well, you know, this is it. Like I came all the way up here and then I go to like the little helipad that was out there which was literally just a concrete slab on top of this mountain peak, which wasn't too large surface area wise. <laughs> it was like a lookout tower and this concrete slab that was there. Um, so going out onto the slab, I was like, wow, you know, it completely changed how I felt about the hike. Mm -hmm. um, well, I mean, I enjoyed the hike up until like um, uh, after the, the, the fatigue. Up until part. it started being ass. <laughs> yeah. Well, after it stopped being ass, I was like, yeah. this is fine. But then I was still very tired at the yeah, top because it's you, like, I think it's uh, the idea of like, um, I know what like, you're talking about. It's not immediate or gratification. Delayed gratification. Yeah, delayed yeah. gratification. That's what it is. Because it's like, you know, the whole point of climbing a mountain is to get to the fucking top. Yeah. You know, you, you, you want to see what it looks, what the tiny world looks like from the very tippy top. And so it's like, you're going through all this shit 
all this bullshit throughout the mountain and you feel like trash. And then you get to the top and you see this view and you're like, awesome. Like, this is it was great. Totally this worth is perfect. It, yeah. yeah. I would go I, back down I did, and go back up again. Yeah. I climbed um, a mountain in Sedona and then one in Phoenix somewhere. And um, I've never been on a mountain. It's pretty dope. We'll and, take you there. Uh, and it was it was so weird because there was literally like hand railings and then it'd just be rocks going up like a vertical surface. Yeah. And <laughs> you would have to climb yeah, that. Yeah, you're like, oh fuck. <laughs> yeah. And like Put um, your gear on. <laughs> <laughs> but the views were incredible, especially in Phoenix um and Sedona, the two places that I went. <laughs> um, but like in Phoenix, you could see like how you're really like in a fucking valley. Yeah. You could like see the the super low land, like uh, in the city and the suburbs and everything and then all the mountains surrounding it and then in Sedona you just see beautiful forests and like other big ass red mountains it's just so beautiful yeah. Arizona is gorgeous it was yeah. super interesting so. because yeah. we saw the north side of the Grand Canyon from mm. the mountain peak yeah, yeah I don't know what side we saw but I I remember sitting I climbed out very far to the edge like in a place that was like isolated from the tourist spot Yeah, and I just like i at first I didn't have any headphones in and I just listened to the wind and the fucking ravens calling. And, um, and I was just sitting there and I felt like, like puny. Like I was like, holy shit. Yeah. Like yeah. this is, Actual this is the earth. earth. Yeah. Up, yeah. Yeah. Cause like sometimes you think it, it, the internet makes the earth feel really small, mm -hmm. you know, like everything's so close just because we can communicate with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or like see it on Google yeah, maps you, or whatever. You can go look at a video of someone in like Singapore. Yeah, exactly. And or, you yeah. feel like you've had that experience kind of, but like the, um, like the whole saying pictures don't do it justice. They, yeah, they don't. They yeah. Don't. Oh, be on the top of the mountain. You can see like one settlement. And maybe like a uh, fucking <laughs> actual flag step. But yeah, yeah, it's like literally the small ass town with maybe like five or six roads that you can literally see yeah. Yeah. in between like these, uh, like in a valley in between mm -hmm. large hills. And you see like uh, Flagstaff and you can see all the way to the Grand Canyon. You can yeah. see the hills that lead into Sedona, the actual mm -hmm. Mesa. And we're like in a That's pine really forest. Cool. So you yeah. can see yeah. like all these, you can see like a lake. They have a lot of different away. biomes. Yeah, yeah. Arizona is really cool because of how you get like on the other side, when you're standing on, one of the peaks in Sedona, you can see where the forest starts and it's yeah. like right there. And it's like for such a dusty red ass place that Sedona yeah. is and having Flagstaff like 45 minutes away that it's a completely different mm -hmm. area. It's really interesting. It's a really I, cool job. I love how many chunks we can load. <laughs> yeah. yeah, really. You, you you should see the mountain. Arizona. So many chunks loaded. World Gen on Ultra. I was yeah. lagging. Yeah. <laughs> up, at the top, <laughs> up at the top too, it's well, something really interesting too that I experienced for the first time was the air like being yeah. so thin being up to, like i noticed at the top um especially sitting down at, uh, right before the peak like i was saying earlier i was just breathing and i'm like <sighs> and I, I don't feel that tired but i have to take so many more breaths yeah. just to regain whatever i lost so getting yeah. up to the top and like taking a breath you it's do like you can feel exercises. how thin the air is yeah. i haven't i haven't done any like cardio or anything before this trip i've been sitting in a computer chair for six months <laughs> But going down, <laughs> yeah, going down to the car again, I was taking like one breath a minute because Jeez. I was acclimated to the top. Uh, did the, I'm curious because uh, I know a lot of times like you can, you can like smell how clean air is like what just being up at the top. Was it just like a, like well, a pure breath of just, just like, it's just fresh. Yeah. Uh, like it's just like, especially at the Grand Canyon. I felt yeah. it was really fresh. Yeah. Like, well, especially here because there's actual trees and it's not like, yeah, it's true. still kind of dusty, but there it's just fresh yeah. and it's just. I don't know. It, it kind of clears your mind. I don't like it doesn't you can definitely smell like different stuff. Yeah, but it's mainly I was going like, to say fresh like and clear the I feel like the it was so clean that you couldn't really smell anything like it didn't yeah. smell any, like anything in particular. I, like Maybe you could smell like the dust of the rocks or like maybe the I don't know, like the, yeah. the the plants around. But other than that, it was like there were no smells or you could smell like the water from like uh one of the many There's small not, rivers. Yeah, There's it was kind of dry. It was completely we dry. Like oh, all, really? All the streams that are oh, using, like okay. you could see where the streams would yeah. run, and all of it was dried up. Yeah. It was, oh, in, yeah. In there, the winter, it was like it was, it was running kind of, and some of it was frozen. There was a uh, there was a forest fire that happened like five really? years before in oh, that okay. exact area, but you could see like the. It was a really cool <laughs> experience because it didn't just happen. Bless you. 
It, it, it was a really does. cool experience because it didn't just happen in the in the region. It mm-hmm. was like a while ago. So yeah. you could see the undergrowth starting to come up. Yeah. There's all these burnt ash trees with like life coming from underneath them. And they were like mm. Vanta black trees. These trees were <laughs> Vanta yeah. black. Yeah. You could That's see like cool. patches of like dark gray grass where there was a fire. Where was that? There's just no trees. Uh, it's it like just... outside of Flagstaff. Oh, maybe okay. like 45 minutes. It's so really cool though. Yeah, that, that Flagstaff is a really cool city. I would love to move there. They had the observatory there, Lowell, Lowell Observatory, yeah. the Yanny Observatory. <laughs> I I know uh, to go back onto the uh, to the smell thing. I know that clean air isn't like a scent, but it is definitely one of my favorite things to. It's noticeable. Smell. It would be yeah. a, it would be an ascent in the way that like. <laughs> not having shoes is considered a shoe, you know? Yeah. Like you can tell that there's a difference, <laughs> yeah. but no, there's you know definitely, well, there's definitely a scent because it, the, yeah. the fresh well, you, scent is created by like all the plants, all the dirt, all the grass, like everything. But I wouldn't really, I don't know. It's, it just smells like air. It's like a neutral smell. It's like, yeah, but that's like, air like and water has smell. a flavor. Oh, yeah. Water has blim, a flavor. Blim. No thought. Yeah, pure, it's, debate. Like, it's like <laughs> it's so neutral and bland that you recognize it as water. It's like one of the most neutral things ever. Yeah, but that that's doesn't mean saying. it doesn't have a flavor. Or it's flavorless. Well, yeah. I'm saying that it's it's so bland and natural that you don't even tell that there is anything different. Because when you're in an environment that has like a fucking candle, for instance, you can smell the candle. I, the I would, air may be clean still, but there's still things that but, are causing smell. I would, but I would inside, not say it's like there's definitely a scent to it. I don't know, like, yeah. and, and also like scents like like all your other senses affect your mental state mm-hmm. and people don't think about scent too much because it's the f- the fastest acclimating sense you have like where like you can be in a room for like 20 seconds and like we don't even smell this candle that's going right now but like that definitely oh does God, affect I didn't you even and that, there's yeah a mm-hmm. well yeah. so if you went up to, into like the the stratosphere where there's like literally no smells that could even exist would you consider that a smell well, I yeah, think I, would. I, I mean, think there like, was research that was done that said that space actually does have a smell. Not yeah, space, just like where there's like the furthest away from yeah, the ground. I thought it smells sweet like, or something you, up you are, there. You are smelling like different burnt. air because there's like it's more ozone and you're. Yeah. So that's the point that I'm trying to make is that it's a smell that is so neutral to us. It just seems like there's nothing even there. It's like but a, I don't, like I don't a think neutral smell. I get, because oh, you I get, get Zane's point here. I'm, kind, you can, I'm somewhat leaning on it. But the his thing side is, here. is you can clearly tell when you're in a fresh air environment versus a not fresh air environment. There's yeah. clearly yeah, a difference. When you're in a not fresh air environment, there's a whole bunch of smells that you can smell. So when you t- remove all of that, yeah, there's still smells, but it's such a, like a, a non-smelling thing. Yeah, but I think like just off of like, it's like drinking a whole mm. bunch of pop and then drinking water and t- describing the taste. Yeah, but like there's you're on a mountain where there's like a bunch of animals, a bunch of wildlife, like all that stuff has a smell to it. Even the dirt does, even the dust does. And if just cause you don't like you're there for so long and you're going through some stress of like climbing a mountain, like you might not think there's anything, but there's definitely a bunch of sense. I'm not talking about whether or not there are scents. I'm talking about your perception of it. I mean, I think I perceive it as a scent. I mean, I think the, the, the lack of anything potent is in itself a scent. Like it's, it's nuanced. so we agree. <laughs> yeah. Also, we've well, been no, smelling you said air like since not we've been scent. born. Yeah. yeah so. And compared to like your average life, you know, like I said with the candle, it's I mean, like you don't even smell that I anymore. Mean, but it smells almost, way clean. Like we're a, literally agreeing, and you're trying to. No, like, I'm, not, I'm not trying to disagree. No, yeah, we're disagreeing. It's, it's just like overly pedantic. Like I don't think yeah. this is worth talking about anymore. The <laughs> word <laughs> going anywhere. Well, it's fair. Like I said with the water thing, it's like when you drink a whole bunch of soda, you're gonna say water has no flavor you recognize i'm you not know, talking your- about this anymore because <laughs> really, you know i'm right no, you're, you're conceding uh, well no i'm just saying it's like we're not even arguing about like we're arguing about like definitions at this point and it's just not going anywhere well, no your perception of something and like the actual makeup of it are two different things yeah but that's also a whole different conversation but about, that's what like, we were talking about it like your perception of. of going from all these different kinds of smells in your everyday life like i can smell the dust in this room i can smell me living in this room but going on top of a mountain, yeah, there's still smells, but it's so much fresher and cleaner. And because there's so much less being added into it or maybe so much less potent smells. I, I guess. Yeah. I mean, like, I, that's a different conversation than we started off having. Yeah, so I think so, I'm, too. Yeah, this is. Yeah. I don't it, think so. <laughs> topic, well, no, because I was closed. mentioning. <laughs> topic closed. What I originally <laughs> mentioned was that it smells like there's nothing even there. It's like, can it even be considered like a scent and compared to like your regular. Yeah, I, yeah it is I, a scent. It's a scent. Yeah. yeah. People advertise that as a scent and people buy it. But yeah. People buy like and clean air. That's what you bottle yeah. up. 
in Dude, like more urban fresh environments. Linens. Speaking of mountains and stuff, uh, to segue into my topic, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but are you how familiar are you guys with like moonshine lore in history? Moonshine <laughs> lore, I don't know. Not, yeah, I I, I mean, went the rival like, families I, I know about in like Kentucky? the 1920s when like people were. Yeah, you know, like the prohibition, dying, yeah, dying bathtub, bathtub liquor. Moonshine, yeah. Yeah. During prohibition stuff, uh, I went on a small YouTube binge of uh, like learning about moonshine and like the history and tradition behind it because it is kind of like a relative. If you want to be a bar bartender, bartender, yeah. bar but uh, <laughs> there's a very famous uh, moonshiner named Popcorn Sudden <laughs> who <laughs> that sounds like a moonshiner name, but yeah, he uh, he existed during the prohibition period and in order to make a living a lot of people uh made moonshine uh because it was just it was money that wasn't money it was literally just liquid gold essentially right mm. and so people would popcorn sudden uh was victim to one of the uh the federal raids uh that had happened and he was facing uh time in prison potentially uh and instead of doing so he released uh, two documentaries and I thought you were going to say diss tracks. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, yeah. It, uh, he dropped some bars. Yeah. <laughs> no, he he documented the whole the whole process as like two home videos. He was. It's. Uh, I think the movie is. Called, it's on YouTube for free. It's called the the last damn liquor uh, run I'll ever make or something or the yeah. last damn liquor I'll ever make. Uh, and yeah, it just. It was just a really old man, and it was he was he was decrepit, but also he had the look in his eyes that he was okay with dying because that was it he, was he had accepted death. Yeah, it was really interesting seeing him make this, knowing full well that he would take his own life. He even he told his daughter as well uh, before he did it. It's like I I don't want to face time in prison. I'm going to kill myself. Yeah, and. I mean, he has his for, for the end of his I life. guess. Yeah, well, fair well, enough. It's, yeah, it's like if you if you're so ingrained in something for so long, and then that's the re like. Not only are you going to prison where like you can't do anything, but the like the reason you're going to prison is because you were doing what you love. Yeah, and it's like it really not even what you love too, what you did to survive. Yeah, yeah. and it's like that that kind of I think puts you in a bad mindset where you're like, oh, the world. I I do this to survive, and then I'm incarcerated for it. And you're like, and then there's. The mental burden of that, that's just a lot yeah. to go through. Also, since the, like, at the time, he'd be, like, breaking the Constitution, <laughs> yeah. basically. Yeah. So, like, his, the punishment was probably going to be pretty severe. But, yeah, uh, fucking... Well, well how long ago was this? This happened... Oh, I, it was I during Prohibition, know. wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, it was, uh... I think, I think he actually... How do you make home videos? What? Yeah, hold up. He, Jamie? The, mm. the video was released in 2007. I don't remember when it was shot, uh... I mean, give me a sec to look it up. But when was like uh, his, the first film made? His uh, the person he made uh, the moonshine with uh, JB. Uh, yeah, he Guy from Scrubs. No, Sorry. but they <laughs> they actually made a a moonshine TV show that has run its course, and it go it just follows like the people who knew Popcorn Sun and uh, like how they have continued to make moonshine and like do all that stuff, albeit legally now. Uh, Lame. Yeah. Uh, he was born in 1946. Died in 2009. Yeah. So this is more recent. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was rather recent. You okay. were thinking there. He made home videos in the 1920s <laughs> <laughs> before the Great Depression. I'm not 100 percent informed about this man that I went on one binge on. He pulled America's, his GoPro out. America's funniest home silent videos. <laughs> <laughs> they have like uh, the frames of captions. Like it cuts to black, and it's like a uh, funny baby fall over. Look at this wild baby. But yeah, they they. They did a whole bunch of shit with moonshine. Like uh, they invited people from other, uh, like some uh, some dude from Tennessee who knew a lot about uh, fruits and making uh, rum and whiskey through all of that distilling stuff. And they brought them into their uh, lineage. Uh, they like they traded they traded the art essentially, and it was really interesting to watch. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So did you learn how to make it? Oh yeah, I know how to make. Uh, you gonna make it? Yeah, you're gonna I try. Could, but uh, do it. Do when it. you get home, I'll have you to have know to a little bit about the law. <laughs> Are you not allowed to make moonshine? Yeah, you can like you can distill your it's own state alcohol. State by state. No oh, way. Yeah, that's dumb. I've already looked. Wait, so does that mean like uh, they can stop you from distilling any alcohol? 
like uh, making like wine or mead or some shit in your fucking garage? Yeah. Really? I think so. I might That's have like so a certain weird. alcohol percentage that you're not allowed to go over. Maybe. Because people make wine and that could be pretty potent. So it's, and moonshine is really potent. Yeah. It's like yeah, sometimes it, 50, 60%. Dude, the, the machine, the shit that they had to set up to get that fucking, like the distillery working is, like, it's so crazy how rudimentary they literally just use copper plates and like they folded it. They, they made sure all the, all the shit was, uh, like all the seams between each piece of metal was like covered in, uh, literally like some grain uh blend so that way it just hardens up and keeps all the moisture inside while you're mm -hmm. distilling interesting and it's so crazy seeing all these like super rudimentary uh kind of like solutions to just literally making machinery yeah back in the olden days yeah <laughs> not even the olden days just like 10 years ago when it's like it, you can't just go out and be like i'm gonna 3d print my distillery yeah, today <laughs> Yeah, you could probably do that. I, there was a person in high school that was trying to use the engineering classroom's 3D printer to make another computer. <laughs> like he had the the fucking... I think I knew a guy who was trying to do that. So I think I might have known him. He's only a grade or two above us, but uh, it, it was really cool how he was doing it. It was like a pretty simple computer, obviously, but... Yeah, I was going to say, like, how do you make it? Like, yeah. how do you make a fucking board? It's all in the material. Like all he has, I mean, he's not like 3D printing the circuitry on top okay. of it, but all the pieces and parts, like the the fan casings of like a GPU. I and see. he was he was a fucking god at coding, so he could probably make all the software just to make it run. Coding mm. god. There's a lot of people like that in high school. <laughs> yeah. One of the things that was hard for me to deal with was going down to a, going down to being a part time student is the fact that uh, coming to terms with the idea that I don't learn as well as other people. Uh. Yeah, learning learning how to learn. No, no. I, I mean, there are people who have an inclination to things, and it takes oh, them significantly yeah. less time than it takes for me to understand the same thing. And I think just uh, understanding that I don't need to be fucking competitive about it. Oh yeah, is yeah. that yeah? That's actually is the, one of the greatest changes that I've ever made. Well, yeah. Also, that opens you up to like the fact that college is not about. It's not really about just. Like it's obviously about learning and being bettering yourself, but it's also a giant part of it is networking, mm, sure. which is like, I know you guys went to, I think all of you commuted, right? Yeah. 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 But like living on campus for two years and then like just living in a college town, like, and networking with people, you realize like, yeah, I'm not supposed to just be like trying to one up everyone. I'm supposed to be like building connections. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to go into game development. So I'm trying to like, literally I'll meet people and I'll, they'll like, I'll just get to know them. You're like, I can can use you like not, not like that but it's like oh i can work on like human real yeah, estate you can like, you can i can utilize you yeah, for a we, project we can work on something to me together and make something good and that's just like i it's kind of like what that, i want to do with to like go about it other people in my life yeah just like being able to collaborate i think is really good because especially in an artistic sense i'm glad that we do this podcast for that yeah. same yeah, reason where it just lets me have i don't have very much creative energy or at least i feel i don't or I haven't tapped into it, whatever the fucking reason is. Mm -hmm. But this has given me at least somewhat of an outlet to put like some of that mental energy that I can use to cultivate my own creativity. You get to nut it out. Yeah, I get to nut it out live <laughs> yeah. on the air. What are you going to say, Tyler? Like creating stuff with, like doing creative stuff with others is like such a good way to like know them like that yeah. you couldn't in any other way. And figure mm -hmm. out like their mindset and like like kind of where they are yeah. well so you know? like yeah like i feel like art is a reflection of the people who created it yeah and so you're just like it's literally like having a child with someone <laughs> to a yeah i degree. mean that's a good i've i've tried kinda collaborating true. with like music with other people like uh, other friends that make music and i'm just like i you know i love you as my friend but i cannot work with you <laughs> it came out bad it's what? not the baby came out bad it's not <laughs> surviving past a year old <laughs> this baby's not viable it's yeah, just like it's not it's, viable if you're if you can't work with people it's like it you just can't work with them it's yeah. it's more like a design i mean i feel like in general like when i have the ability to take leads i will but when other people do it i'm always i feel like i have to micromanage and i just hate that about myself doing this so i have to be like i need to learn how to trust it's like i want to work with more people to get rid of that kind of aspect but also it's like i need someone that i can trust yeah and i, I can't really put trust in people that easily yeah. especially working on like art because yeah. if i'm if my name is attached to it i'm like that's why i haven't released any music of my own just especially, because it's like yeah. 
especially if you have like a bit of perfectionism in you. And that's, it's toxic being at such a low level that I am because it's like, <laughs> I, I mean, I want to get better and I feel like I have gotten a lot better than yeah. I was like two years ago, maybe. Yeah. Do you know about like the, the learning, I don't know a hierarchy, but like, like process where like first you, you don't know anything. And so you think like, once you start learning stuff, you're like, oh, I'm really good. Yeah, and then yeah. you get good enough to where you realize I'm not that good. And I feel like that, like the Dunning Kruger. Maybe, I recognize maybe. how much more there is to yeah, know, but, essentially. But like, yeah, you kind of think like you're v pretty good at you're very good at producing music. Pretty I, good, no, very no, good. No, you're pretty dope yeah, at no, music. I mean, I, no, I, d no, you're you're, <laughs> you're, very, you're very good at producing music, and I think it, you're just at that point where like you know you know all the possibilities. So then yeah. it's like kind of daunting, but you have like you, you've made stuff in the past that is really good, and you you still make stuff that is really good. Like I. I just think you're at that point where like there's a lot to learn and you like you kind of have to decide what you want to tackle first. Right? Yeah. Uh, th thank you for the kind words, but <laughs> I mean, like I honestly believe that. Yeah, I, I do too. I I've, I've really enjoyed like a lot of the music I'm that you've cry, shown me. <laughs> I'm not going to ride your dick here. Yeah, tell me it sucks. <laughs> Insec <laughs> Instead, I mean, I'm like, going to bounce on it. I mean, the thing is like looking back on <laughs> our Sculch, our, our stupid mixtape that we made. Yeah. Um, there are, there are things that I like as ideas, but I was just so inept at that time where I didn't really know what else to do, especially mixing and mastering wise. I did, I did it for like a week and I was like, yeah, that's good. And it's yeah. garbage. <laughs> well, like it, it, you play any song in a car and it's going to be the worst experience yeah, ever. But also there's like that. Like part of that is just because we worked on it for like what four years, and so yeah, my, like well, some of my first ever beats. Yeah, well, yeah. So you have like those old parts that are on it, and then you compare, and they're right next to the new parts. Yeah, so then you're like, oh, and then it just seems like really in, incoherent and inconsistent because of that. But I mean, there's still really good stuff on there. Like, yeah. there's whole. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say really good. <laughs> there's a lot of really cool parts, like yeah. on Ah, like the <laughs> <laughs> the arpeggio uh, underneath the like the really distorted bassy, mm -hmm. whatever the fuck. Like that shit sounds so cool to mm -hmm. me. Like I get honestly chills when I listen <laughs> to it. It's ridiculous. Thank you. I mean, I appreciate and it. It's Dave dropping bars. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, something that I had talked about with my therapist when I first started seeing her was that like I, um, I like I had this idea that like whenever someone complimented me, they were just being nice. And that the only thing that was real was when people like, like even if yeah like, i get what you're like, saying are you saying i have that, I like <laughs> that. No, i'm just saying like i like i like criticism no, I, I also like constructive criticism but it was just because like i knew like like naturally i know there's like i'm not at the peak of anything so that there's stuff to learn and i think i was just like i took that too far to where i was like oh i'm not i'm not good and like these compliments are fake or they're by people who don't know what they're talking about yeah. so they don't mean anything it was feels it, like it, felt, a, it feels a little patronizing to get complimented sometimes. Yeah, like, yeah, think sometimes. That like, like, oh, this is so yeah. good. Yeah, exactly. And it's is like, it, whatever. Dude. Is it like, like a faith <laughs> in humanity kind of thing? Um, I, I don't I think, think it's just a perfectionism that. mindset, yeah, too. I think it's just yeah. also like a, yeah, you're like, I mean, I procrastinate a lot. So then I, you know, I'm doing stuff last minute and then I get complimented on it. And yeah. then I'm like, oh, I shit this shit out. Yeah, yeah, like, so it feels like I, I'm like, but you that's know, a testament to your skill then too. Yeah, yeah, kind of, but it's also like a bit of like the, like I kind of had an idea for, for a while that like most of academia was kind of bullshit and that it's actually <laughs> very easy because I've bullshitted a lot of stuff Yeah, so have and, I. I've been, and I've like gotten good grades on it. And I'm like, either this instructor didn't take it seriously or like I'm, like or there's just really low standards across the board as a as a but, serial procrastinator i think one <laughs> of the hardest things to understand is that when when that time crunch really happens you don't really understand how much work you're actually putting into it yeah there there is like it's because you had that long gap of doing nothing to that small gap of doing fucking everything that you don't realize that you are working like over max capacity kind of shit you're literally you're doing overdrive. you're doing better than what you ever could have I've I've also like with my procrastination like when I do procrastinate it's kind of now that I've I've procrastinated a lot throughout my life mm -hmm. what I'll do is I'll like even when I'm not working on it I'll think about it so I almost like really like fuck up the whole creation process where I think about everything and then I just do everything in one yeah. session yeah. which is not how you should like it's no. it's not <laughs> it's, you're not going to get the best results but like it definitely is interesting where it's like i spend like weeks thinking about something and like planning it out and then i do it in like six hours yeah and you're I've, like oh, i've done that before yeah i do no, that I, every I, time that's kind of what leads into like the imposter syndrome mindset too yeah because it's like even if no matter what skill like anthony you're really good at piano 
or keyboard in general. But yeah, ex- <laughs> exactly. Though that's yeah. my point. It's like I don't think I am. Yeah, you know, good like, at I, this I stuff. Think- I I've rationalized it like this. Like I think I'm good to people who know less than me about piano. That's and what I Tom know, was saying too. Yeah, though. and I know not very much. But it is exactly what you're yeah. saying. Zane, and Zane also, knows about piano. Zane yeah, knows true. about music. True. I think that's true. Yeah, so that's, that's it. Does feel good to get it from you. Yeah. But then I would say I don't know that much. About <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, so it's but, it's a, a negative feedback. Yeah. Loop the now. the comment thing or compliment thing that we were talking about earlier. It reminded me like it fe- <clears throat> it feels like. Because you were saying it was like a faith in humanity thing. It, yeah. it's, it's not necessarily that. I feel like it's more so just that these people who are generally complimenting me are obligated to do so because of our relationship. Like if like they're my, my parents. Yeah, they're my parents or they're my girlfriend or other, other some, some other uh, relationship or whatever. Like they, they have some obligation to do that, which is, which is why it feels patronizing. Because it's like you don't really fucking mean that. I don't know why you're even saying it. Like... Just shut the fuck yeah, up. They're just saying it because yeah. they're a sub. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't need That'd compliments. Simp. <laughs> Criticism is something I think is really hard to take, especially as like a newer artist. Because it's I hard just, to give. I think it's easy to give. <laughs> no, I, I, I kind of, I wish people were willing to give more criti- I guess it's not, you know, more criticism. Everyone, I think is good. Open but, criticism. Like, well, yeah, like at, well, like actually good criticism. Because yeah. there's sometimes there's like, oh, yeah. I don't like it, and like, <laughs> yeah, you're like, like okay, what does that cool. mean? Yeah. yeah, when people actually like digest something and then they think about it and they're like, this is what I think. It's like it doesn't necessarily like obviously it will be like a mixture of compliments and then also criticism. Yeah, and I feel like that's the best because it's like okay, you get like what what they like, what they don't like, and if you don't get both, then you're missing out. Yeah, you you feel like it's all shit that's when you only hear the criticism. The five scale. Take a side. Five scales oh, of bullshit. Me and Zane were talking about this. We, <laughs> we, like the your whole thing about the five scale is so distorted. Like, <laughs> what are you talking about? Pick a fucking side. You either okay. liked it more overall, or you didn't like it as much <laughs> okay, overall. I think so it's either two or three. The, the difference is, is you're thinking of it as a fraction. They're thinking of it as points. Oh, well, yeah. So like. I, okay, That's a good way all, to put your, it. Yeah. Your whole like having like being halfway is dumb. Sometimes there's <laughs> like, oh, oh, wait, oh, we should right. clarify no, what no, no, this no, is. No, because for, for the okay. listeners. Okay, so Alex rates stuff on a five point scale and he doesn't use fractions. And he doesn't do that because he like he doesn't like two point five out of five because it's or like a five out of ten. It's, it's yeah. literally just middle roading yourself. It's yeah. giving you an option to not have an opinion on it. Yeah. I don't like the idea of having an option but, to not have an opinion. But I think that implies that you have to care about all art that you that just like sometimes there's you know there's music or there's art that i it's just like meh that 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 i experienced like (laughs) that that (laughs) sometimes is like not meant for me or like i just don't relate to it because the thing they're the thing it's discussing is unrelated isn't in my life you know so it's like impactful so like i can go like oh that's good but i don't really care or it's bad and i don't really care and it's like, okay, I'll I'll give that a five. And it's like, or I just am not, I don't know enough about it where I'm like, I get like, there's a lot of reasons that you can give stuff like a five out of 10 or a 2.5 out of five. I, I feel like I make the division between those two things then where it's that if there is something that I do not care about, I won't bother giving it a scale because I don't care about it. I was going to say okay, that. That's, that's, a, that's a good point. Because like, I wouldn't rate it if I truly don't care about it. Because then it's like, it's like, why am I even rating it? Yeah, what it? kind of opinion do I have to give but, on well, something pe- I, I mean, don't care but about? But people who rate stuff and post it, like you, like you can't just do that. Like yeah. If, yeah. You, if you put the time into reviewing something, like th- they probably will do the same thing where they're not going to give it a five because they feel like they need, like it's, you're going to get a better, re- like, you know, people are going to be more willing to click on it if you like lean towards one side. Because if you just say like it was all right, then no one will click on that shit. A like, five for something you care about would be something that you truly just found to be like, uh, like okay, not yeah. in the sense that is it's like not good or bad, but it's just like it's not like prolific it's, in its area. It's, it's just better kinda... than well, I would say that if it was something that wasn't prolific to me in any sort of way, I wouldn't even give it anything. It would just be something that didn't really. You know, I I I don't feel like I could rate it if does, it was something that was extremely bad and actually right there. yeah. So to, wait, it does it does it it has to have some like impact on your life for you in order no, to, to be, in order like, to rate it? No, small things can do that. So I don't think that's necessarily bad. Like I think I I kind of oh. do agree with him where it's like if I view something and it's impactful, then like I'm like that was worth it. And can, like so, and sometimes I, it's small things, you know. Oh, I want to I want to explain the levels of the five scale too, <laughs> where it's five. Uh, uh, a five out of five implies that this is like to me, this is a prolific thing. This is a work of art kind of thing. Mm. Yeah. Uh, whereas like four is it's like a I 
enjoyed watching this movie. I would watch it multiple times to be able to digest more from it. But does it really impact me all too much? Uh, maybe not necessarily. That that four is the cutoff for this is a good movie. Or maybe this I haven't found movie. it yet. Yeah, this is a good movie that I will rewatch. Three is like a uh, kind of kind of in the same vein of like a, I would put like the Sonic movie where it would be it would be like it's good, but I <laughs> kind of I. I'm starting to lean towards the part where I like it doesn't matter too much to me. I still I still had something to take away from. I'm still kind of connected to it. Uh, a two on the scale is kind of like uh, two on the scale is kind of like it. it it's like a, a bad movie that's so bad it's good. Uh, I, would okay. rate that, I would rate that a three. I feel like a two out of five is like some bad movies is are like better than is like it kind of tries to go for something and it's like pretty mediocre, you know? Yeah, mm -hmm. and just like a one is like I would, it's I am, I'm three interested. Is like you like the it's concept. harmful. Yeah, yeah. One is I'm interested in the concept. I I wanted to see them do everything different though. Not well executed. Yeah, just horribly do you have executed. A zero or do you, is I do a, not use zero. okay. I think because then that would be six. Yeah, I do. I do like the broad the broadness of that scale because it definitely like. Um, then you like because no matter what review you're doing, you're always going to go into deeper detail after the rating. Mm. I think there's a YouTuber called Skill Up. Have you ever watched him? I have not. He does like I was kind of mentioning this to you, but he does like 40 minute long reviews on video games, and there he doesn't rate them. He'll he in in the title he he'll either say he recommends it or like he like kind of recommends it, like strongly recommends it, you right, know, or like yeah. doesn't recommend it. But he'll like you know goes through each part and like you know. With each video, there, which he, with each game, there's usually stuff that he really likes about it, and he'll go into depth about why he likes it. And then there's other parts where he says, like, "Yeah, I, this part didn't work at all. Like, I didn't like it." And then it's interesting to see, like, how he decides, like, "Yeah, because this part didn't work, this is way more vital to the game, and so I'm not going to recommend this game." Or he'll that's or he'll weird. recommend it to certain people, oh. which is like, you know, I think is a way that's, oh, that's a, like if that's you like these types of games, yeah, if like you like this. these types of games, or if you're not that experienced for the genre, then go ahead and play it. But if you've already played a bunch of games in this genre, then like don't because you're not going to get anything out of it. Okay. I think that's that, a very that's really cool. That's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's it's a good way to Video engage more piano. than the audience of the game itself. Yeah, I think I think judging these kinds of scales is just or judging with these kinds of scales or is just kind of like. It's demeaning because two <laughs> things that can be, you can have the same kind of enjoyment out of out of them, but for completely different reasons. Yeah, True. I, I don't rate too hard on the scale. The scale itself is just like a general outlook of how I feel about it. I feel like, like it's just used as a translation. Mm -hmm. Like this is well, yeah, it's like quick, primarily yeah, it's a like summary yeah. communication. Yeah. And on, I mean, honestly, yeah. I do like scales like that. Giving something like a B plus or like a two, yeah. it's just flopper. like SS. <laughs> yeah. I think it just makes sense. Well, yeah. I, I don't think I can ever <laughs> I think there are aspects that I do like and aspects that I don't like That's about fair. it. I think in general, we shouldn't use it because we get more valid critiques out of it because you it's like you can't just slap a number like yeah three out of ten, ten three out of ten i don't give a it's fuck. like that would be in a quote or uh, quote tweets of like uh, you drop an album and everyone's like Mid, <laughs> three out of ten. i feel like if we're talking about rating stuff we need to talk about the last of us too like, have you, do you guys okay. know, are yeah. you guys aware of Last of Us? I'm, I'm aware of, like, I've seen the, the Nakey Jakey video. I'm okay. aware of, like, the drama That's surrounding it, I think. But yeah. I think, um, like, I never played it, and yeah. I was never into the first one. Right. Really. Well, I did binge all the cutscenes, too, just yeah. so you know what's going on. So okay. explain I, the situation. Okay, so I haven't played either game. I've watched walkthroughs of both, and I've watched, you know... I've seen a playthrough of the first one. Yeah, and, I, and I've watched, you know, a lot of content. I've also just thought about it in isolation by myself. Um, and, like, so The Last of Us 1 was a really good game. It ended in a place where like there's definitely more to go from that like it ends yeah. with um joel killing a doctor that was going to kill ellie because she has the cure for the disease and so it's kind of like it's it's there's a resolution to the story where there doesn't need to be a second game yeah but there's also a lot of stuff to explore like okay well he did that so what's going to happen to this virus now that's taken over the world and yeah. also what's the dynamic like between joel and ellie and so the second game you know it's controversial because it kills off Joel, who is the main character of the yeah, first Yeah, how game. early does that happen? It, very early. Very early. Very yeah. early. And, okay. Spoilers, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> it's old. And so, <laughs> yeah. and also in terms of like, and so Ellie's whole thing is like, she's kind of trying to get revenge and then she realizes revenge isn't the answer, but she loses everything. And it's like not, a, it's not a satisfying ending. Like, yeah, I give it a two like, out of five. Like literally like at the end, like she goes, like she kind of like, swore off revenge and then she goes back for revenge again and then she loses like essentially what is her new family and it's just like 
so there's like a whole debate about like, oh, did this game that didn't necessarily need a sequel, it got a sequel and led to a less, I guess, you know, fulfilling ending. And now also one of your favorite characters is dead. And like, how do you feel about the the series versus like uh, ending it like the on the first game? So it's like it, the yeah. the second the second game itself kind of ruins the overall impact of The Last of Us. Yeah, I I don't, I don't see it as that because it's his okay. own thing. And like you, yeah, I mean that's like the same thing I was talking about about like being in the moment on the mountain. It's just like if I'm playing a game and I know there's a another game that's like a sequel that's not as good. I'm never going like oh this game is bad. Like I'm yeah. just like this game is good and mm. it. Yeah. It's its own thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fair. So what I will say as a person who watched a playthrough of the first one and saw some cutscenes of the second one, I think it's it's a brave like narrative decision because one, you have this new character who you really know nothing about, but you know their backstory. Yeah, yeah, who kills the a fan favorite character, right? Um, and like. Okay, so wait, hang on. Let's build on something first. Joel and Ellie's relationship was kind of fucked after the whole thing, right? Because yeah. she kind of resented him for the whole, uh, for like that whole thing, didn't well, he? Well, or didn't she? She didn't really know about it in, oh, okay. in the first game. And I think no, I'm talking about in the second game. Oh yeah. Like, well, I think she doesn't. She realize it after once he's killed, right? No, I thought he learned. About, she learned oh, about because yeah, they yeah, had a no. rocky relationship yeah, before. Yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um, so yeah, their relationship was kind of fucked, and then. Joel gets killed by this new uh, character. And so it's like... Who's the daughter of the doctor that Joel yeah. kills at the end of the first game? Yeah, so like Joel... Or so Ellie and Joel don't get to resolve any of their issues, right? It's a lost like connection. It's empty. It's gone. It's it's messy, they right? Whatever they left, and then like... You. And then you're also forced to play the character that kills like the fan favorite. Yeah. So it, it's also like it adds like a whole new dynamic. And I think it's like a brave decision. Like it's a really interesting choice to yeah. do that. I don't know if they pulled it off well yeah. necessarily, well, but also to comment on the ending, like you said, it felt messy. I, I feel like that was kind of like the purpose of yeah, it. Does it also like, end on a cliffhanger? Not really. Okay. I don't remember it. I don't. I'm pretty sure it ended I, with. I, don't with, you get to choose? You get to choose to either like kill her, kill Abby, or don't kill her. I just watched a walkthrough, so I don't, I don't know. And it's also well, you'd probably I see the choice. Played it. I, why not? Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's still interesting to talk about because yeah. also, like, one of the reasons I do like it is because, like, so everyone loves Joel because you play him the yeah. whole game, and he's just a kind of a cool guy, I guess. Mm -hmm. yeah, but, he's an asshole, you, but not really. Also, kind of. you build sympathy with him right away with mm -hmm. the opening of the the first last. What of a us. beautiful intro! It was a really good intro. And um. And so then you have, like, you kind of show, like, yeah, he killed someone for someone that he loved. And Abby kind of, like, you know, she, from her perspective, like, Joel is just someone who killed yeah, he's a random her killer. father for yeah. no reason. Like, there's other ways you could have stopped him from dissecting yeah. Ellie. And so then you see it, like, okay, so everyone loves Joel. And then you don't like Abby because she took revenge on, like, in a way, Joel took revenge on the, on yeah, the doctor. It, like, Abby's... So Abby's motivations make yeah. sense narratively, well, you know. Yeah, like yeah, it, it also points out the the consumer or the players like like um, hypocrisy with yeah. it, where like where they just like certain characters because they you they know played as they play with they built them. Up, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you also you understand Joel's reasoning, and mm -hmm. Abby is just kind of like she's not necessarily shoehorned in, but I feel like they didn't spend a lot of time building her up before the whole kills Joel thing and then I feel well, like they try to they try to double back on it where it's like oh let's let's build some remorse for Abby now by going through her backstory throughout the game well I think she's isn't she introduced to the character by killing Joel yes. yeah yeah so, so it's like they're not trying to build backstory at the beginning yeah they I, want I you I, to sympathize with her over time yeah, so do you I, think I feel like the uh, one of the problems I had with this game was that I felt very disconnected from the character's motivations and I'm not saying that as in like all oh, these big impact points. I'm talking about as a whole, as the plot progressed, I kind of felt myself giving less and less of a shit about what was going on. Because That's the worst. It, it felt like they were... I understand that, you know, the, the whole anger, you can make a lot of irrational decisions and stuff. But there, there's a line when it goes beyond irrational and just kind of asinine. Or where that I... I all of a sudden, like, I didn't give a shit about Ellie uh, trying to either seek vengeance for Joel or how she interacts with other people because I just, 
what what does she want? I don't know. Yeah. Like it I felt very conflicted watching the playthrough of Last of Us 2 uh, because just I I couldn't understand why characters were doing what. I I think that like I feel like that part of that is intentional where it's like just a bunch of like angry confusion. I mean, we were yeah. talking about anger earlier. And I guess, like, but I, in a, in a way, I would have understood that. But I feel yeah. like the the way I saw it felt very forced to me. And it wasn't, it wasn't like a, this is how things happen. It felt more of a, they're making this happen, you know? Well, I mean, like... It didn't feel like a breakdown of emotion from this large traumatic event. It just felt like a... I don't, like I, a blockbuster moment. Yeah, yeah, really, like a like an M Night Shyamalan twist. <laughs> like, a, I'm not gonna kill you, so because I'm a better person or like shit like that. Yeah, like just for no reason at the end, kind of. So, shit. synopsis: Last of Us Two is cringe. Last <laughs> of Us Two was kind of cringe. Last of Us One was beautiful. Uncringe. Right. I give it a four out of five. All right, see you later, everybody. <laughs> All right, for bye, bye, bitch.